What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I'm a diagnosed narcissist and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and then also validate the victims and survivors of said disorder. Not in my studio today, y'all. I'm actually in my living room because I have to watch her for a second. She's right there chilling. Um, but we're still going to chop it up. Today's episode is going to be about how your peace, your peace, P-E-A-C-E, is worth fighting for, or is it? When you're in a narcissistic relationship or coming out of a narcissistic relationship, peace is the goal. Like, you want peace. You want that tranquility because so long, you, you know, you've been in a relationship, a toxic relationship for so long. So many, so many years that you might feel like you wasted, but you know, that's for another video. <clears throat> so many years that you spent with this person. So many years giving your time, effort, energy to this person. Peace is out there. Like you, you haven't experienced peace in a very, very long time. So now you, that, now that you're out of it, or you might be still in it. You might be, you might be trying to get out of it. You have to understand that your peace is worth fighting for. It's going to be tough. Like it's not easy getting out of a narcissistic relationship. Look how many follow. Yeah, I have almost like across all my platforms, I have almost two million people that follow me. It's a good thing for me because I, you know, I have two million people follow me. But like, still, there's two million people follow me that have experienced these these toxic behaviors, or that have, they feel like they they might have been exemplifying these toxic behaviors. So so you're not alone in this. So if so many people found it to be easy to leave. My platform wouldn't even have have a point to exist, or if, if it existed, if it existed, it wouldn't be nowhere near as big as as it is right now. <clears throat> so it's not easy. You get trauma bonded to these people. You get addicted to these people. But you need peace. You deserve peace. Do you feel like you deserve peace? A lot of people will answer that question and say, "Yes, I feel like I deserve peace." Then why then go get it? Go get it. You li you literally have to go out here. And you know, fight for it, and go try to try to find your peace. Point blank, period. That's that's the goal of so many people. Like, I, but you you say you want it, but your actions don't dictate the show the show that you want it. You know, your act. You know how how it goes with most narcissistic people, where your actions and the words don't match up. So in this situation, your actions and your words are not matching up. You say you want peace. You say you you feel like you need peace. You deserve peace, but your actions say otherwise. Your actions say, uh. I want peace, but I want it with this person. You know, I want peace, but I, I need it with this specific person. Like there's billions of people on the planet, but you want peace, and you you pick this one specific person to be with and try to find peace with, but they're not bringing you peace. They're just cause you turmoil and break you down and destroy you. Typically from the inside out, you don't look the same, you don't feel the same, you don't act the same, you don't behave the same anymore, and that's how it goes. So you have to ask yourself: Is your peace worth fighting for? Because so many people say, say, so many people in my comment section, I just want peace, but I can't leave this person alone. Then you don't want peace. Do you want peace? If you wanted peace, you will fight. You will fight to, lead, to find a way to get past that person, to find a way to get over that person, to find a way to get through that, get, get through this, to get through the trauma bond and break the trauma bond and things like that. Do you really want peace? Because to a lot of people, peace seems boring. I told y'all she was right here. She's got this little pig that she requires me to open consistently. So y'all hear my daughter in the background, my podcast. This is her pig right here, y'all. You say, no, no, stop. Okay, look. Here's, look. There's your pig. Can you say hello? It's open. I have to open the pig for y'all, but she'll come up here and try to fight me in a second. Um, <clears throat> your peace. Go get it. What are you doing? Ask yourself. I feel like the rant bubble bubbling to the surface, y'all. What are you doing? You're not happy. Everybody sees you're not happy. So many people want to hold on to these toxic ass, pointless going nowhere as relationships because you don't want to see the person that you're with treat somebody else better. You don't want to see somebody else reap the benefit of your hard work and effort that you put into this person. And uh, and sometimes you put you you've got you a bum ass person that you built up into something. You know, you've got a bum ass person that you built up into something. Like nobody wanted you when I first met you, but me. Okay, you got a you got somebody that you really didn't want. You got a project person. And just like in school, you don't get it you it's just like in school, you don't get graded on the project until you turn it in. So until you finish the project, you don't get graded on this. So when you finish the project, other people are going to want said project person. Maybe they didn't want them at first, but now the project is finished. 
other people are going to want this project person. You got an A plus on this project, and guess what? Other people want it now. So they and now they feel like they've outgrown you and they leave you, or you don't, or you want to fight to hold on to this person that just they just that you've helped build up. But that person is no longer bringing you peace. That person is not your peace. Where is your peace at? What does peace mean to you? Because a lot of people, when you, get, when you get out of these toxic relationships and you find a new person, you find a good person too, but you don't. It don't feel right because it's boring. I speak. Nineteen oh six said something very, very. It, he opened my eyes when he said this. Shout out to uh, I speak. I, I speak. Nineteen oh six. Anthony Highland over on YouTube. He said peace looks boring to people who don't know who, who people who haven't experienced it. Peace looks boring to those who have not experienced it. Like peace is going to be boring sometimes, y'all. It's not going to be this toxic ass up and down roller coaster ride with you screaming, crying, punching the punching the ground, punching the walls, clawing your hair out, losing weight, gaining weight. You know, not eating, treating your kids terribly, neglecting yourself, neglecting people around you, neglecting your education, neglecting your job, neglecting everything. Y'all, you give up so much for these toxic ass relationships. When are you going to go get your peace? And yes, sometimes peace looks boring. It's not going to feel the same as this toxic ass roller coaster that started off on a high. But your peace is worth fighting for. It hurts so bad when I leave this person. Okay, but you still, you have to fight. If it was easy, everybody would do it. I've seen so many people give in to give in to the trauma bond and go back because it, it hurts so bad. It, the pain is so unbelievable. But guess what? I still hurt when I'm with this person. I'm still unhappy, but at least I'm here and it doesn't hurt as much. Both ways are painful. You have to pick your heart. When you're leaving a narcissistic person, or you decide to stay with a narcissistic person, toxic person, you have to choose your heart. Both ways are going to be hard. Leaving is hard. Staying is hard. The leaving heart is unbearable. It's excruciatingly painful. Your stomach is going to hurt. You're going to have withdrawal symptoms. Like this person was a drug, right? You're going to feel it, right? It's going to hurt, right? You're not eating as much. You want to you want to reach out to them. It hurts so badly. That pain goes away over time if you allow it to. If you start to work on yourself and separate yourself and go no contact, don't look at their social media, that pain eventually subsides. But the pain of staying is there. That's to the pain of giving in to your giving in to the pain, giving in to the hurt, the fear of the, the fear of leaving. The pain of staying hurts more and it's continuous. This does not get better. How does it get better? How? How does it get better if you can't talk? The relationship isn't that bad if I don't speak. Then the relationship is terrible because you're not speaking. That's being that's this that's cognitive dissonance right there. That's, that you putting the, the your eyes are wide shut. If you're not speaking, the relationship is not good. Because the one of the main factors, I re, I, I damn I will damn I will give you a hundred dollars if anybody named the top ten things to make relationships work, and communication is not one of them. <clears throat> If communication is not one of those top 10 things, I'll give you $100. Because communication is key. If you can't communicate with the person, you can't be with the person. How you can't? I, I can't. I don't have a voice. I don't hear anything. Baby, you put the... How'd you get them here? Here. Sorry, y'all. It's daddy time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's happy. Can you say hey? They looking at you. Look, Adele. She's too happy, y'all. But yeah, your peace is literally worth fighting for, y'all. The fight is gonna be hard. It's not as you're fighting. The crazy thing about it is, who are you fighting? Who are you fighting? Your peace is worth fighting for. But who are you fighting to get that peace? You're not fighting the narcissist because they're going to be them. They're not going to change. They're going to absolutely 100% continue to be them. They can make a little small incremental changes for short periods of time, but continuous change over an extended period of time is very, very rare. But you are fighting against yourself. The part of you that wants to leave and the part of you that wants to stay. One wants peace, one, one doesn't. Which one is going to win? But I feel like the battle with yourself, when you get that peace, look at how many survivors and things like that are always in my comment section. Say, just, just thankful for the peace. And that pain, that pain that it went through, that pain lets you know you're alive, y'all. That pain lets you know you're doing the right thing sometimes. When you work out, your arms are going to hurt. Your legs are going to hurt. When you go for a run, your chest is going to hurt. When you first start doing it, because your body's not used to it. Go get your peace. Chase it down. Run it down. But I thought this was my soulmate. Yo, so your soulmate is from right where you are, right? Eight billion people. You got one soulmate, correct? This is my twin flame. Burn it. Let, extinguish it. Extinguish it. This is my twin flame journey. We both abused. We both made. Uh, okay. 
you going to look. I'm not here to tell you to leave. I'm not here to tell you to stay. I'm just here to tell you that fighting for your peace is worth it. What do you want to do? What do you want? What do you want out of life? Because you will never, ever truly live up to your live up to your full potential in a toxic relationship. You just can't. It is that it is impossible. You cannot live up to your full potential in a toxic, narcissistic relationship where your voice is not being heard, your emotions don't matter, your feelings don't matter, and communication is out the window. You are holding yourself back. Your peace is worth fighting for, but you're fighting against yourself. You know what I mean? Literally. You're literally fighting against yourself. Put your gloves on. Give yourself some black eyes, some bruises, some bumps and bruises, some emotional bumps and bruises, and go get it. Go get the life that you deserve, y'all. But anyways, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. I really, truly appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for bearing with me as, I, as I'm as i on daddy duty right now. Uh, like and subscribe for more. And as always, mental illness is out. Peace. And my